Hello everyone. Welcome to Integration Con again. I hope you are enjoying the videos here. So today in this video I'm going to explain how to define a data service in WSO2 EI as a SOAP service. So in the previous tutorial we looked at exposing a data set as a REST service. Now this is a continuation to that. So here today we'll see how to expose a data set as a SOAP service using the data services feature in WSO2 EI. Let's proceed. The first thing is to log into the administration console of WSO2. I'm going to log into my admin console. I have local instance of WSO2 EI running in my machine. So, logging in. I'm using the default username and password, which is admin and admin. Just like how we did in the previous tutorial, uh, under data services, Click on create. Now you have to give a service name here. So I'm going to expose uh, or rather the data set that I have is related to the employees. So I'm giving it a name like employee web service. If you wish to give a service namespace, we can give it here. So I'm giving HTTP dot EMP service dot com give it a description I'm just gonna give this as an employee service yeah. click on enable streaming which is selected by default and then under the transport settings uh, you have four options uh, HTTP HTTPS local and JMS uh, for this for this particular video, I'll be exposing the service as HTTP or HTTPS. So hence, I'm checking the local option. Proceeding further, click on next. Here, we need to add a new data source, which means this is the the data source from where we are going to fetch the data. If you have already pre-configured your data source by visiting the configure tab here then you'll have an option to just pick it from there which is uh, what i'm going to follow uh, if you if you want to know how to configure a new data source i have a video already detailing that and the link to that is given in the description so please watch that so i'm going to give a data source id i'm going to give employee db data source type so from here there are different options available and uh, these are the options supported by WSO2 to be a data source. But now, since I'm going to select a predefined data source, I need to click Carbon Data Source. So, if you have a data source which is pre configured, click on Carbon, Carbon Data Source. Now, from here, pick the one that you have configured. So, in my case, my H2DB is a data source that I have configured. So, select that and save. So your data source configuration is completed. Click on next to move further. Now it's time to add a new query. So this is a query which is going to execute on the data on your uh, database table or a view uh, to fetch data. So I'm going to give it as uh, query one. You can have uh, any name here which is matching with your requirement, and so that uh, the query ID itself is self-explanatory. But here I'm just um, going with the basics. I'm just giving query one, picking the data source as employee ID, which sorry employee DB, which I configured in the previous uh, tab. Now here is the time to configure the SQL. So I have the the data that I'm going to extract is this. So I have an employee table with four records, and it has six columns. So I'll be selecting all the six columns based on employee ID. That's what I'm going to do. So let me write the query. Select. And I have the fields pre-written here. So just copying the fields from here. From. Then give the schema name. The schema name that I have is GSP schema. Or employee. Employee. And then. You have to give where condition. So here I'm going to fetch the data based on my employee ID. So I'm going to give 
emp underscore id is equal to question mark now here's where we are going to map the input fields so to map the input fields click on generate input mapping so this automatically adds an input mapping with mapping name param param zero so click on edit to set your mapping name so i'm going to have my input name as employee id so employee id will be the field coming in my request xml so the parameters type is a scalar because it's just one single value and it's going to be an integer so what i have in my request xml would be an integer there's no need for a default value and it's an in parameter so click on save click on main configuration to go back to the main configuration so we are done with the query. This is our query. Select employee ID, first name, last name, designation, grade and department from employee table based on the employee ID. Now once that is done, you have to give the group by element. So this is going to be the parent tag of your response XML. So I'm going to give it a name like employee info. So this is going to be the parent element. Yeah. if your data says it's going to be repeating then you can give a name against a row name so that that becomes a complex type which repeats but um, since this query is going to be uh, it's going to fetch only a single data because i'm querying again against an employee id i'm not giving that a uh, row name uh, but if it's like a, a search to get all employees you have to give it a name here and if you need to have a namespace defined uh, for each row uh, you can configure a namespace here so once that is done click on the generate response once you click on generate response I will show you the fields that will be part of your response so we have all six fields here as mentioned in the query and so this is going to be the name of the, the fields that's in the response and these are the data source column name if you wish to edit this click on names click click on the edit uh, option and then you can change the name and output field so if you if you don't want it to be emp underscore id and if you want it to be employee id you can change that so for now i've just changed one for the demo purpose and save it yeah so this is going to be the employee id in the response so you can change as you wish uh, for all the remaining fields so once you're done save it so the query part is completed you're moving on by clicking next now it's time to define an operation so being a soap operation we have to give a meaningful name here so i'm giving get employee info you can give a description which is optional and then a query id now here is where we map the query to the operation so the the query that we just defined in the previous section i've mapped it to the operation and automatically it populates the operation parameters which is employee id emp underscore id which is uh, going to be there in my request xml once the configurations are completed click on save and move on by clicking on next now if uh, in our case currently we are working on a soap service we are planning to expose the data set as a soap service so this, this uh, configuring resource is not relevant in this case so we can just click on finish once that is done your service configuration is completed you have to wait for a few minutes uh, for your service to appear here because in the background it will be deploying the service so click on refresh to see the service yes we have our employee web service appeared here which means the deployment is completed yeah on click on employee web service yeah that gives the endpoint so this is the endpoint on which the service is available so to test the service that we just defined you can either use the try the service option available in the admin console itself or you can import the visitor to tools like uh, soap ui so here I'm, I'm just going to go with the try the service option available in the console itself so click on try the service 
that opens up a new window and this is going to be our request XML so we have get employee info which is a root tag and then employee ID which is uh, the field that I I need to pass to get the data so as uh, you can see in my database I have four employee IDs 1001 to 1004 so I'm, I'm just going to give 1004 uh, just to fetch data switching back I'm going to give my employee IDs 1004 click on send see you get the data here so the service has returned uh, the data available in the database table a quick recap of what we did first thing is to configure a data source from where you need to fetch the data then you need to add queries to fetch the data as per your requirement so you need to adjust or you need to configure the input and output parameters again depending on the requirement once that is done define an operation to expose the service as a soap service i hope you enjoyed the video if you have any queries please reach out to me either using my email or, uh, or the comment section. Thank you for watching.